Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of the Orca Slicer Calibration Series, where we're going to be calibrating our filament's flow rate. Let's go over here and click New Project. First, let's choose our printer and our settings. I'm choosing my Bamboo Lab A1 with a 0.4mm nozzle, and for this video I'm going to be calibrating my Sunloop PLA. Let's go up here to Calibration, click Flow Rate, and click Pass 1. Now that we have our model, let's click over here to refresh the settings, and they're back to normal. And now let's go and slice our plate. What the flow rate test does, it determines your printer's optimum flow rate for that filament. Flow rate is how fast and how much filament it extrudes. We're going to have to run two different tests to completely calibrate our flow rate. Let's go over here and print our plate. All right, the flow test is completed. Let's check the results. Looking over here, we want to find the one that has the best surface quality, which means the smoothest and the one with the nicest lines and patterns on it. We can use a light to make it a lot easier to see the patterns. Going down at negative 20, we can see tons of tiny little scars all over the bottle, which we do not want. Up at positive 20, there's a whole grid pattern. And if you actually feel it with your finger, you can see that all of the grid lines are raised, which is another thing that we don't want. I found the smoothest and best surface quality to be in negative 5. You want to choose two values. The second smoothest for me was negative 10, so I chose negative 5 and negative 10. Of these two values, you want to choose the highest, so mine will be negative 5. Alright, now let's change our filament settings. Heading over here, we can scroll down to flow ratio and pressure advance. Right now, my flow ratio is 0 0.98, and we're going to change that. We have to change it proportionally, meaning we can't just add or subtract a value. Instead, we have to multiply. I found minus 5 to be my setting, so we're going to do 0 0.95, which is minus 5% or 0 0.95 of the original, times 0 0.98, or whatever it shows for you. And from this, I get 0 0.931, oops, which I'll put in right here. Let's hit save. Now, it is really important that from the two best values you found, you chose the one on the higher end. Please take a moment to check that, as if it, you didn't select it correctly, you might end up with really bad results. But now that this is done, let's start flow rate pass 2. Click X here, go to calibration, flow rate, and click on pass 2. And let's send this off to print. Click slice over here, and hit print plate. All right, we've now finished pass two. Let's check the results. Using my flashlight here, we can look at the surface textures of each individual plate. Starting, let's start from negative nine. This is why we chose the higher end because the values go down and it's therefore between the two values. All right, looking at negative nine, it's a little difficult to see on camera, but there are lots of ridges between the model with between the printed lines and that's not what we want. Therefore, I'll shift up to the higher end of the scale where we have zero, minus 1, and minus 2. In my case, 0 is actually the best quality, it's the smoothest, and it has the nicest perimeter and less gaps between the lines. However, for the purpose of this video, to show you how to dial in your settings, I'm going to select minus 1. If you have 0, then you don't have to change anything in your settings. All right, now that we found our modifier, or in my case, our fake modifier, let's go up here and edit our settings. Right here, at the flow ratio and pressure advance section, we're basically going to do the same thing we did before. Let's open up our calculator. I found my fake modifier to be negative 1, so we'll multiply 0 0.931 times 0 0.99, which is 1 minus 1%. Let's click enter. From here, we get 0 0.92169, which I would input right here. But as I told you, my modifier was actually 0, so I'll just put this back to 0 0.931. Once you're done, go over here and click Save. Be sure to save your filament every time you edit it, because you don't want to change your settings all over again.
All right, the next stage of your calibration journey is going to be pressure advance. In the next video, I'll show you the three different ways of calibrating pressure advance and what I think will work is the best and most effective method and show you how to use that to calibrate your own filament. Be sure to follow along with the rest of the series and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. See you next time.